Tal'Dorei Reborn is a recently released third-party product for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons that details the campaign setting for the first campaign of Critical Role. It's a revamp of the Tal'Dorei campaign setting from Green Ronin Publishing back in 2017. It includes a lot of content from the original, and as you can see, is about double the page count. It includes new subclasses, player options, lore about the world, and it has a lot more story insight into the world of Exandria. But the real question that you might be asking yourself, is this book for me, and is it worth adding to my collection? Hi, I'm John from Inside DMD and d and today we are reviewing Tal'Dorei Reborn. Tal'Dorei Reborn is a hardcover release by Darrington Press and is written by Matthew Mercer and James Hayek, the two original authors for OG Tal'Dorei. However, this time, these two are joined by Hannah Rose, who's worked on first-party D&D products Candlekeep Mysteries, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and most importantly for this review, Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. And last, this book has 283 pages, whereas OG Tal'Dorei only had 143, so it's just shy of being double the same size. I'm going to start off with something frank and shocking. As much as I love Dungeons and Dragons and content creation, I'm not a big fan of Critical Role. What? I have nothing against the show, its community, the world of Exandria. Obviously, Matt Mercer is a skilled DM that really deserves the praise that he gets. I completely understand why the show is enjoyable to watch and its impact and influence on spreading the popularity of D&D and other tabletop role-playing games at large. Personally, I just have a lot of trouble following the action of live plays. When everyone is talking, laughing, moving in and out of character, I just have a hard time following what's happening. And I mean, I tried. I tried listening to the first four episodes of Campaign 1 and the first 10 episodes of Campaign 2. But a change in medium is intriguing, which is why I'm interested in watching the Vox Machina series when it finally premieres. And as a side note, I'm not surprised that these two things are releasing right around the same time as each other. Hopefully they'll generate interest for each other. And I've been really open to like all my critter friends that if the campaign one story and the campaign two story were written as like books or novels, I'd be totally cool giving them a try and reading through them. It's honestly just a medium thing. So when you listen to this review, just know that what I'm saying isn't coming from a fan that's been pre-positioned to enjoy this content. My thoughts? I freaking love it. Yes! This is one of my favorite fifth edition products, period. While I have some mechanical criticisms of some of the content of OG Tal'Dorei, I really appreciate the amount of love and passion that's suffusing every page of this product. I mean, even the book's construction is built so it's easy to use. Instead of a poster map that's in the back of the book and perforated, there's a nice little like folder cover on the inside where the map can just fit and I have a place to put it. Embarrassingly, I have ripped my fair share of perforated maps of as I'm trying to get them out of the little binding. Take notes, Watsy. There's also this lovely little bookmark strand thingy, kind of like what they have in those Barnes and Nobles classics. That way I don't lose my spot. Take notes, Watsy. Write that down, write that down! <laughs> the page quality is superb. The text is easy to read. It just feels well put together. The art is also amazing. A lot of it is recycled from OG Tal'Dorei, but that's because it was so good to begin with. I just love the aesthetics of this book alone. So now on to the content. Now, while I did enjoy reading through the original Tal'Dorei campaign setting, I did notice a distinct shift in tone and a level of detail in Reborn. The text feels more confident and fleshed out. For example, if you put what each product has to say about the setting's factions side by side, you'll notice that the Reborn text will have like a similar entry, but it'll be a lot longer and there's more detail to kind of hook into. A lot of the ideas were given the space to be fleshed out. And I did like a quick page count of each of the gazetteers. And for example, OG Tal'Dorei had about 50 pages uh, dedicated to breaking down the locations on the continent, while Reborn had 80. 
And you can also tell that this writing team had learned a lot of lessons from the release of Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. While OG and Reborn have similar sections and beats that they hit, the organization of those sections is different. For example, in the original Tal'Dorei campaign setting, the section on player races is more put toward the beginning of the book, even though the mechanical player options are toward the back. And while that's all fine and good, the other thing next to the player options was lore information about the non-player races, you know, like Fae and Aberrations. Whereas Reborn has a very clear top-down progression from chapters 1 through 6. So, for example, the first chapter of Reborn is all about the higher concepts of the setting. Everything from Exandria's creation myth, to the calendar, to the pantheon. And then it goes down to the major factions operating on the continent, then specific locales, then finally individual cultures and how they affect the player characters directly. Whereas a lot of the stuff in OG was just kind of like thrown around to what they felt kind of fit best. To me, Reborn's progression just feels a lot more logical. For maybe fans or collectors that have both OG Taldore and Wildmount, Reborn does repeat some of the content that you get from those other books, but it presents it in a new tone. Like Wildmount, Reborn talks about certain historical events in Exandria's past, such as the Age of Arcanum or the Calamity. But rather than treating it like a mythology or treating it as if it's fact, a lot of it is more like a historical academic interpretation of what we think happened in Exandria's past. It got me to pay attention in a different light and also got me to start asking questions of my world that I hadn't considered and really gave me some new creative ideas that I could use to make a more immersive experience for my players. Again, even though I don't really plan on running a quote unquote Tal'Dorei game. And of course the new product has more player options. OG Tal'Dorei had five subclasses, the Reborn one has nine. I haven't done like a, like a comb through to see like what mechanics have changed or stay the same. Although I will say I noticed that there is a huge emphasis on Hemacraft, even though we still haven't seen like an official printing of the Bloodhunter class. One thing of particular note in this section that I noticed wasn't necessarily what was added or included, but also what was left out. In particular, there were a few feats from original uh, Tal'Dorei campaign setting that personally as a dungeon master, I found either unbalanced or a little clunky. The two that come off the top of my head are dual focused and rapid drinker. Dual focused being that you can concentrate on two spells at a time and rapid drinker being that you can drink potions as a bonus action. Knowing what some of the potion effects are, I felt that was really powerful and it got kind of clunky to figure out, you know, concentration based on, you know, two spells at the same time, while also be potentially unbalanced, especially as you get higher in level. I noticed that a few feats from the original campaign setting were absent from the newer product. To me, it spoke to a certain maturity that the authors now have, and I actually appreciate it. I find that Reborn is a much stronger product because of it. And last but not least, for fans of campaign one, in the allies and enemies section, kind of towards the end of Reborn, we get a look into each of the heroes of Vox Machina, including characteristics, their story after the epilogue, and their stat blocks, which to me I thought were kind of like their player sheets. It's not only a great Easter egg for Critical Role fans, but the thing I took away from it is it demonstrated how powerful and meaningful the players' decisions were and how they affected the setting directly. This isn't Matthew Mercer's world that the other players just get to hang out in, but the world stays the same. The players had direct, meaningful impact with the direction the world would go next. And there's almost nothing more powerful for a player in a D&D game. So like I said earlier, personally, I love this book. WotC hasn't really given us a whole lot of alternative settings from Faerun, and I know the community is hungry for updates to a lot of D&D's legacy settings. You know, like Dark Sun, Dragonlance, Spelljammer. As a dungeon master, I found this book really helpful in terms of inspiration, getting me to ask deeper questions about my setting. Obviously, if you're a Critical Role fan, I can highly recommend this for you. If you're a DM and you're interested in in-depth world building, even if you're not 
not planning on running a Tal'Dorei specific game, I think this book is worth it. But if you're just a casual player, you can probably pass on this one. There are some cool player option ideas in here, but because this is a third party product, I find that DMs tend to be a lot more hesitant allowing some of these options in. When I ordered Reborn, it was a little bit over $60, which included shipping. Because this isn't a first party product, it's probably gonna be a little bit more expensive than your average D&D book. I found it was worth every penny, maybe even a little more. So now I'm curious on your thoughts. Are you a fan of Critical Role? What do you think about the new player options presented here? Let me know in the comments down below. Remember to give this video a like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and have an awesome day, everybody.